Welcome back, welcome back. Still why in the morning. Thank you for staying with us. We appreciate your company. We have now come to the career and youth and career discussion. And today we want to talk about job interview strategies. What are you supposed to do when you're looking for a job? What are you supposed to do when you've been called for that interview? And what happens after? Well, we are joined by Evelyn Mutio. She is a HR executive and career coach with over 13 years experience in the HR space she has interviewed over 500 positions from top level board to the low level Evelyn welcome thank you so much it's, it's an honor having here. you with us it's an honor again to be here yes and you are uh, you're not you you're not a guest <laughs> over here yes. you've been here before yes. yeah so uh today we are talking about career and you know of course the job interview strategies so before that mm -hmm. uh introduce yourself well, I think you said more than enough about me. <laughs> but anyway, I usually say I'm a child of God. That's who I am first. Mm -hmm. But I've worked in different spaces as a HR, uh, as a HR executive, both at an operational level and at a strategic level. I've also been interviewed before. Yeah, I've worked in the renewable energy sector. I've worked in non-governmental organization, both um, uh, mm -hmm. health and also agribusiness. I've worked in agribusiness before. And I also sit in different boards as an advisor. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's in a nutshell. And yeah, I do know sometimes when it comes to interview, it's a lot, it's a strategy by itself. Yeah. So you can't just send you can't just send CVs blindfolded. You have to really understand what does the role require. But I believe you're going to get into that. Yes. yes. So that's exactly where we're starting. Yes. So you know, when you get the job advert, yeah. wh where, where do you start from? What are the areas that you need to highlight? Key areas that you you need to look for, out for. Yeah. First of all, when you get a job advert, you need to first of all and ask yourself what is this role looking for. Mm -hmm. You need to get into the eyes of a recruiter. Mm -hmm. That's what I always tell, tell most of my clients and even most of the people that I in, that because I have interviewed people before. So you have to first of all analyze the role. First of all, which 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 cadre? First of all, get to understand mm -hmm. this role. Who is it going to be reporting to? What does the key competence of this role require? Mm -hmm. Let me give an example of, uh, for instance, you're applying for a role of a CFO. Uh, the CFO, first of all, one of the, the key responsibilities that is to drive business, understand the numbers, yeah, one of the things. And then the key requirements, the, the, there's, the, there's also the part of desirable and also a minimum requirement. Mm -hmm. Minimum requirement, for instance, uh, the role requires that you have a, a background in finance, yeah, yeah. Uh, an undergraduate in finance, or you are a registered uh, accountant, or you have done something like that's minimum. If you don't have that, mm -hmm. there is no point of bothering to to to, to apply. For that to apply. Then there is desirable. Desirable is like it's not a must you have it, but if you have it, you have an added advantage. Okay. So once again, and then you also look at the key competences, like for instance, someone who is analytical, someone who uh, can be able to create partnerships. Mm -hmm. So these are key competences that really need to be to be appearing in your CV. Mm -hmm. And it takes only two minutes. Like, actually, I, I, usually, it, I usually say it takes five seconds mm -hmm. for a recruiter to determine whether they are going to look at that CV or not. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, you can imagine you're applying for a role whereby uh, it's over 500 people who, are, who have applied for that role. Mm -hmm. So you really, really need to be very smart. So you've aligned your CV, you've aligned. And then one of the other things, you have to also look at that role. Your CV should not portray a doer. Your CV should portray a value add, yeah? Uh -huh. I mean, I keep on saying that people are hired to solve problems. Like, for instance, uh, as again, I give an example of a CFO. CFO, like for instance, they role, someone who can be able to drive uh, the business to up to, or, or for instance, increase market share by a certain percentage. Then you need to demonstrate in your CV how you've done that before. Mm -hmm. you, you need to demonstrate that. So like, for mm -hmm. instance... Um, Let's say uh, in your past experience, you state that you probably used to, you advised the board to increase market share. You negotiated maybe uh, an agreement between, uh, for instance, a lend, uh, you, the, the lenders of your organization and investors. Mm -hmm. That needs to come out there. So uh, you put that in the cover letter? You put that in your CV and also in your cover letter. So, okay. So yeah, because but I it has to be very brief. But your CV is now where? That's now what will determine mm -hmm. you to be called to the table. Okay. The value add aspect. 
So you need to have that value add aspect. Yeah, you have it. to have the value add aspect. Other, mm -hmm. Otherwise, who wants to just hire someone who's just doing a job in the people want a value add in the organization. Mm -hmm. And okay. if you're called to add value, then that's what you should be portraying. Remember your CV is what is going to get you into the table. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then the other aspect also get to understand what that organization is all about. Like for instance, uh, go to the website. Most of the times I've even seen cover letters. People have written cover letters. Like for instance, mm -hmm. you've used one generic cover letter for like five jobs and then you even okay. forget to remove the <laughs> you forget to remove the, the, the name of that uh, the company. name of the company you had previously. <laughs> and like this person is saying is and uh, is very keen to detail and that keen to detail already a perception has been formed. Yeah. So you need to understand, first of all, what is all about the organization? What is the vision? What is the mission of that organization? Mm -hmm. You have to align that in your cover letter. Okay. Remember, you might be technically sound for that role, but you are you a cultural fit? And cultural fit has to align with your core values and the values of the organization. Okay, yeah. so these are some of the tips to get into yes, yes. The, uh, to to get the call to the interview. So now, uh, when you talk of the CV and you know the value add bit of it, and you say what you've done maybe in that position mm -hmm. in another job, yeah. so how do you, you know, mention that briefly? Because a CV is usually just an outline from this year to this year, you know. Yeah. So how do you exactly? So one put of the that? things is uh, like, for instance, uh, what I've seen also in some CVs. What really happens is that sometimes people re replicate the, their job description. They don't replicate their value add. Like for instance, uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's what happens. So you see a JD is what you're required to do, but how are you adding value? So like, let me give an example mm -hmm. of, um, I'll just take a role of, uh, let's say someone who manages projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are the key competence of, uh, of uh, a project manager or a project officer, project cycle, mm -hmm. risk mitigation and all that. Uh, maybe if you're handling a project from uh, what your company from your company to another client, then it means that you're also negotiating a terms of payment. For instance, you have uh, the project cycle. So you need to keep put out th you need to put out those key competencies mm -hmm. and the value that you've done. Like for instance, you increased efficiency by let's say 13%, uh -huh. you, you did this, you, you negotiated, uh, you, negotiated uh, you negotiated the payment process whereby at least, at least the payment cycle for your organization and that, I mean, ensured that the organization had some cash flow. So mm -hmm. those are the key things you need to be putting, to be put, to be putting out. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. And yeah. how long, you know, how, how long should your CV be? How many pages should it be? And also, <laughs> is a cover letter mandatory when you're sending out your application? Some companies will want you to have a cover letter. Mm -hmm. Others, it's not necessarily. Uh, it's not a must that you have a cover letter. But it's good to have a cover letter. Mm -hmm. Especially when they say that... Um, uh, it's not compulsory. That's, then you have to be proactive to show so that, I mean, sometimes maybe uh, one might not want to go through your CV and especially some organization whereby they use application tracking system mm -hmm. whereby it's only like, let's say like 50 CVs that will get to the hiring manager. All these others have been... Uh, all these others have been have been filtered by the system, mm -hmm. and the system will put has already been custom made in a manner that uh, has been custom made in a manner that it will filter out what that role requires. If it's five years experience, mm -hmm. that ETS is going to filter oh, that out. Okay. If it's the key competencies you have, this you've worked in a certain industry, that ETS has been filtered. That mm -hmm. by the time now it's getting to the hiring manager or the recruiter, uh, they are like fifty, and now now this is now filtering out now to the long list now to determine who are the people are going to come to the to the interview okay. so you have to be very you have to be very intentional on what you want to put out there mm. in terms of how many pages that a cv should have i'd say five maximum but also let that have five pages have content it and i think i need to mm. add something else about also something that is very very crucial and uh, has gotten so many people hired is the linkedin I personally, uh -huh. I have actually been headhunted for, I think, over four jobs in LinkedIn. Through LinkedIn. Yeah, through LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So what are you putting out there? What kind of, uh, I mean, I mean, LinkedIn is just a profile. It's just uh, a summarized CV. Again, now bring out 
your value add, your key achievements, what have you done in different organizations? Okay. Because when the headhunter or the headhunters or recruiters are looking for someone, they'll just search for project manager. And if at all you've added value in your sector, mm. your, 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 your name is going to come, come it, like among the top ten. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, quite interesting. Mm. And uh, when you're mentioning some of the key things that they look into, uh, you mentioned the minimum requirements. Yes. So now, uh, you know, people apply to jobs and say, <laughs> you just say, let me just try this out. Yeah. So if I don't meet the minimum requirement, so I shouldn't apply for that job. If you really feel like, uh, if you really feel like you, you have met the, let's say, the minimum requirements, like it's 100%, and maybe you have, let's say, 80, 70. Mm -hmm. I mean, apply for the role, but be very, very intentional in what mm -hmm. that recruiter is looking for. You have to pick pick keywords even when you're applying for that role mm -hmm. that need to appear in your CV and also that need to appear on your, on cover, your letter. cover letter. Yeah, okay, It's very, so very crucial. Key to, uh, you should be key to pick the yes. keywords. So yes. if they want, uh, you know, whatever skills and yeah, the you skill, mentioned their competencies their, your professional objective mm -hmm. really needs to align to with what that role requires okay uh, otherwise you'll end up just uh, you you always ask yourself i'm only sending applications i'm not getting a short list i'm not yeah. getting short listed but it's because you've not taken time to okay. align with that troll and what that troll requires. All right. Yeah. So now uh, you've done the application, yes. you have uh, been shortlisted, you get the call. Yeah. So when you get the call, how are you supposed to respond to the call? Maybe you've applied to over 20 <laughs> jobs, you know, <laughs> uh. and they, they tell you, um, You've been uh, invited for an interview. Yes. You, did you apply to with our company? Say yes because you're not even sure which company you applied to. So yeah. Should you? Is it okay to ask which company is this? Yeah, it's okay to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, how, however, when you are also um, when you're also applying for roles, it's always good to save some of these job descriptions because you never know. Mm -hmm. uh, like sometimes it might be actually be short -list and you're like in fact when you ask the company it, it will, if you took time mm -hmm. if you took time to apply that role you just didn't send CVs blindly and you didn't get to understand what yeah. the organization is all about for a fact you're gonna remember so it's okay to ask there's nothing wrong with that, that. Oh, okay. but now now let's now talk about the aspect of now you've been called for the interview now that is what is going to separate the, uh, the, the is going to separate it's where the rubber meets the road yeah mm -hmm. uh what what do you, you need to first of all be very very intentional in preparing yeah in, yeah get to understand like for instance again uh, assuming um 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 i'm called for an interview for a role of a hr director or uh, a chief hr i automatically know the person i'm going to be reporting in that role is going to be a ceo and the board so mm -hmm. i need to understand I need to go out and look out. I like, let's say I've in, been invited in Y254. I need to understand mm -hmm. who's the CEO of, two, of Y254. Yeah. Because that's the person. He's going to be seated in the panel. Yeah, I need to understand what is the organization all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to understand what have they done. Uh, at the top level of leadership, I always tell people, organization strategies are always in the organization, are always in the website. website mm -hmm. Yeah, Go have a look at that. Have a look at their strategy. Where are they going? The five-year strategic plan. Mm -hmm. uh, where I, in the in the entry level? Why do you want to work for them? What inspires you for them? Who, who are you all about? You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's very very crucial, uh, especially in, yes, you've been called. Get to research about the people who are going to be sitting in the panel. If you, you mm -hmm. get an opportunity, you can even ask uh, the person who's, uh, who has uh, called you for the interview, uh, how many people are going to be in the panel or okay. who should I expect in the panel? So, yeah, the CEO. Others will even give you the name. The CEO mm -hmm. or, 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 for instance, the CEO, maybe it's the head of uh, a, cent, a certain head of that department. Mm -hmm. You look them up. I mean, you get all the information there. So it's okay to ask when you get the Yes, call. it's okay to ask. Okay. It's very much okay to ask mm -hmm. because I remember there's one time I was called for an interview uh, sometime sometimes back and yeah. the lady who had uh, called me for that interview mm -hmm. uh, gave me a name that I thought was a female name only to realize that it was a male name mm 
Uh -huh. So I had to really ask her who's going when he said he I had to go look up at the look at the one of the panels is like wow it's very <sighs> crucial to always be prepared and it also gives you some sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you and you go there with the confidence that you already know this person so yes. it's not uh, And you'll you also know. align to their language because one of the things is that uh, when you go for interviews yes you're technically sound mm -hmm. but you don't know what makes this other person tick. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to understand what this other person makes them tick. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, and it, you can pick a lot even on what they post on their social media, like LinkedIn. Like, they, maybe someone, like, I remember there's one interview I sat for, and uh, the CEO was a very key person, was a person who really valued people's development. And every time mm -hmm. when I was answering things to do with people's development, I could see the guy nodding. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So, what? <laughs> What else should you uh, prepare for in advance apart from researching about the company? Yeah, research, no, no get to know about, the, the, as I said, the bullet by bullet of that role. You really have to have gone mm -hmm. bullet by bullet. You know of everything that about that role. Everything, so that you even come up with various examples of what you've done. Like, for instance, um, uh, interviews are structured in, uh, I'd say, three or four perspectives. You have the technical question, you have the behavioral questions, and you also have something we call the risky questions. Mm -hmm. Behavioral questions, they are trying to test your cultural fit to the organization. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, uh, like for instance, let's say as an organization, they really value collaboration, they love teamwork, they value trust. They'll ask you questions around that, and it's up to you to make sure you show that. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, they can ask you, give us an instance whereby you had to. So you have to give the, what was the situation, mm -hmm. yeah? What was your task? What was your action, and what was, your, was your, your result? And in that aspect, you have to bring out the aspect of... Um, how did you collaborate with the other people? Mm -hmm. How so did that, you demonstrate yeah, teamwork? Did you collaboration. What yeah. was your role? You know, uh, and then again, for instance, a role requires the teamwork, a role that can be able to manage a team. You do know when you go there, give us how, I mean, how do you manage your team? How do you motivate your team? That's not the point to say that that, that I, I work well alone. No, that role really requires that you work with other people. Other people, yeah. Yeah, so you have to be very crucial on what what mm -hmm. they really require. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so that's the, then the technical aspect. Give us an example where you are, you manage to build partnership. Give us an example where you had to handle a crisis. Mm -hmm. Give us an, you know, those those are, are behavioral, like technical. Uh, do you ha can you understand how to use? A, 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 have you used an ERP system? Then yes, you give examples. What, ha for instance, you've managed a transition of one ERP system to another. You need to bring out that. That's the point to actually mm -hmm. show what you're all about. Yeah, you, yes. you bring all your all you of bring you. your egg <laughs> your egg game yes. to the table. Yes. All right. Yeah. So there's uh, researching about the company, knowing about the role. Exactly. And now, do you do the mock interview? Is it okay to do the mock yes, interview? Yes, it's actually very, very important to. If you can get even a coach to prepare you, even better. Mm -hmm. I usually say that it's not the most qualified candidate who gets the job. Okay. It's the most prepared candidate who gets the job. Wow, most yes. prepared candidate. They're most the prepared. You, yes, and mm -hmm. you, you wonder, you, you always ask yourself, why didn't I get the, I mean, how did she, she <laughs> was really prepared or he was really prepared mm -hmm. for the role. Okay. It's a strategy by itself. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. So apart from that, and the dress code. So the dress code is also very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, when you dress, when you, are, when you dress appropriately, mm -hmm you really bring out your A game and it also gives you confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, very crucial to be very intentional on how you dress when you're going for interview. Even now, right now that we are having interviews that are being held virtually, mm -hmm. you really need to look the part. It gives you confidence. It gives you confidence. It makes you feel that you have the content to, to, to show. I mean, mm -hmm. you want to go for an interview where you, whereby you're struggling. For instance, you've done either you've done too much makeup for the ladies or yeah. you have a, a, an outfit that it's showing is too revealing. You now start making the panelists to stop 
concentrating on asking you the questions where you came Instead for the interview. They are now starting to be distracted, Without and you you'll, you'll have not you'll have not captured your value in that uh, in mm -hmm. that setup. Yeah. So is there a particular way that you know ladies should dress, that yes. men should dress, yes. and what is that particular dressing? Uh, if you are uh, for, 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 I have never had a problem with gentlemen, but of course I've been in interviews where a mm -hmm. gentleman came up showing uh, very funny. <laughs> yeah, so as a gentleman, mm -hmm. it's good to put on a very good a good shirt if you can wear a tie, a very good uh, mm -hmm. a very, very good pants, yeah, yeah, so that you look very very presentable. If you can even a coat, yeah. If at all the organization, they are, they are pro, for instance, they are casual smart put on good casual smart, mm -hmm. not uh, things that will actually wonder whether you are really, uh, really taking this role seriously. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be, they say, you're going to be addressed the way you are dressed. Okay, you're yes. going to be addressed the way you are dressed, I yes. like that. Yes. All right, so yeah. you can do casual smart? Casual smart, depending on that organization. Mm -hmm. But to be on the safe side, just wear a good outfit, a good formal outfit. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you come in, even if it's a casual, uh, it's it's uh, where they they are uh, they encourage casual smart. You can also 